In this video, we are going to see how you can configure view content event on your Shopify store for Facebook Pixel using Google Tag Manager. You only have to do this if you are not using the Shopify's built-in app for Facebook and Instagram that configures all the web and server events for you automatically. However, if you're facing any kind of issues with that or your view content event is not firing for some reason, then you can also configure this view content event separately to that existing setup. If you have both the integration natively and Google Google Tag Manager running side by side, then you will see a large number of events on your Shopify store that have been recorded in Facebook Pixel. This video has been divided into five different sections. In the first section, we are going to see how you can configure Google Tag Manager on your Shopify store. In the next section, we will see how you can configure the configuration tag for Facebook Pixel, which is called the base code on your Google Tag Manager account. In the third section of the video, we will see how you can set up the scripts that you need for view content event on your Shopify store. In the fourth one, we will create the custom HTML tag or using the Facebook template tag for view content event. And in the final section of this video, we will test everything to make sure everything is working all right or not. You will find timestamp of all this section in the description of the video. There are three prerequisites of this video. You need to have a Google Tag Manager container and you need to have a Shopify store active in production. And you also need to have a Facebook Business Manager account where you will create your Facebook pixel. So let's head over to my computer so we can configure Google Tag Manager container on your Shopify store. So on your Google Tag Manager container, you can directly click on this ID. It will show you the option to add the head and body tracking snippets. Otherwise, you can go to the admin section of the Google Tag Manager container and under the containers column, you will see an option for install Google Tag Manager. Once you will click that, you will be represented by two different code snippet. One is the head snippet and then the other one is the body snippet. We need to place both of these codes on directly on the Shopify store. So let's first copy the head snippet and go back to the Shopify store. Click on online store and it will automatically redirect you to the theme section. If you don't have enough permission, you need to make sure that the owner of the Shopify store provides you with enough details. Click on the three dots to edit the code. It is always advisable to deduplicate your theme before making any changes to the live version. So once you click on edit code, it will represent you with the backend files of your Shopify store. So let's search for theme.liquid file and right under the head section, we will paste the Google Tag Manager code. Now let's go back to the Tag Manager to copy the body snippet and under the Shopify, we will look for the opening body tag, which is right here and paste the body snippet right here. I usually like to format the code because it does this indentation thing that I really like. However, this step is not necessary. You can hit save and now your Google Tag Manager store should be connected with your Shopify store. Let's go back to the workspace section and hit preview on the store so we can see if the Google Tag Manager container is properly configured on the Shopify store. So once you enter the URL of the website and hit connect, Google Tag Manager will connect a debug view with your Shopify store so you can see all the events. You can install this legacy extension from Google to see what kind of Google tags are fighting on this page. So we can see that the Google Tag Manager container has successfully loaded on the website and the debug view is connected. If you're facing any kind of issues, just make sure to refresh the page and see all the changes have been saved. You can also try disabling any kind of ad blocker extensions that you might have. In the second section of the video, we are going to configure the Facebook base tag on the Google Tag Manager container. So let's head over to the Facebook Business Manager and no matter on what page you are, you will see this option for all tools on the home page, on business groups and everywhere. Click on Event Manager and it will take you to the Event Manager section of the Facebook Business Manager. Event Manager is essentially a hub where all the data is coming in from your Shopify store to Facebook Business Manager. Let's see data sources if you have already created a pixel. However, if you have not created a pixel, you can click on the plus sign to create the data source. Under the add events, you can click on new integration and we are going to install a meta pixel. Previously, it was used to call Facebook pixel. So let's hit setup and we are going to go with a manual integration. Let's copy the base code and head over back to the Google Tag Manager container. This base code is responsible for finding all kind of page events and any other event snippets that will fire later in the later on the website. We want this trigger to fire on all pages of the website, so let's head all pages for the trigger. And this is a custom HTML tag, so we will paste this here and let's rename it to custom HTML meta configuration tag uh, your spelling does not have to be this bad as mine but this is just an option so you can hit save 
And now we have added the Facebook Pixel configuration tag on the Google Tag Manager account. So let's hit preview to see how this looks like on our Shopify store. Once the store is connected with this debug view, you can see that the Facebook Pixel has fired on this page. And if you will go to the debug view, you can see that under the container loaded event, the Meta Pixel has fired. Uh, this is one option however dealing with the code can be a little daunting so what we are going to do is use custom templates that has been created by facebook pixel team for google tag manager so let's delete this tag so we can create a better option for ourselves let's use templates and under the templates you will find an option for search gallery we are going to look for something that is called facebook pixel tag and this tag is created by facebook archive team so let's just select that and add it to the workspace once you will add the tag to the workspace this will be available like any other tag that you have on your google tag manager account so let's hit tags on the google tag manager container and click new since this is the configuration tag and we want this tag to fire on all pages so for the trigger we are selecting all pages and for the tags you will see that we have a new tag under the custom section which is called facebook pixel so let's select this facebook pixel tag and the only thing it requires is the facebook pixel id so for the facebook pixel id let's hit let's go back to the facebook business manager so we can get the facebook pixel id so let's go back and select the facebook pixel that you want to connect and the database ID is something that is your Facebook pixel ID. Previously, it was called pixel. Now it has been renamed to data source. So go back to the Google Tag Manager and you can paste the value right here. However, we might need this value again and again. So what we are going to do is create a new variable for this one that we can refer back. Click the plus icon on the top right corner and we are going to create a constant variable because the value of this variable is not going to change. So we can name it meta pixel ID and let it save. This will automatically be imported into the Facebook pixel tag. So let's rename this tag to meta configuration tag. Perfect, let's hit save. This step is exactly same as copy and pasting the base configuration tag. However, using this tag is only good because it requires the amount of coding that you have to see during the whole process. So let's hit preview to see if this tag is working properly and the Facebook pixel tag is firing on the page let's go back to the website and once the debug view is connected we can see that the, again the same page view event is firing however now this event is firing through this meta configuration tag in this third section of the video we are going to see how you can communicate with the developer so that they can add the custom view item script that is really necessary to configure the view content event on google tag manager for shopify store however if you don't have a developer available and for some reason you want to do this thing yourself so you can also find a link in the description where you can copy the code for this step uh, we have also prepared a pdf that you can share directly with the developers to make your life a little easier so uh, if you have copied the code from the description let's head back to the shopify store and in the shopify store we are going to create some snippets uh, snippets just makes life a little easier so you don't have to find and organize codes in different places so in the snippets uh, we are going to create two different snippets one is going to be for head data layer and this is going to be the main file that controls all the snippets related to tracking so in future if there is any issue you know that which file you need to look at uh, once you have copied the code, paste the head data layer code here and hit save. Now the second snippet we are going to use is for the actual view item thread. So we are going to create a product.data layer snippet and hit done. What this is going to do is create a new snippet and in the snippet we are going to paste this code for view item event. So what this code is going to do, this will fire basically view item event and then we can use this view item event to fire different events on the Shopify store. Perfect. Now we need to just make sure that this head data layer snippet is available in the main file where we can access it through the Google Tag Manager. So you can paste this code on the head section too, but I just like to have all the codes right below the body snippet for the Google Tag Manager. You can find this line here in the include section and we can include that. Perfect. Now what this piece of line is doing is that this will bring this head data layer code inside the theme file and this will trigger this view item event if the user is on the product pages. So let's uh, hit format and hit save. And to just to make sure everything is working all right, we will connect the Google Tag Manager container with the debug window with the Shopify stores to see if the view content event is firing. And then we will move to the fourth step. Uh, let's head back to any of the product pages and go back to the Shopify debug window. And we can see that the view content event has fired and it has all the details such as product ID, name, currency, titles, and all the things we need. So that's perfect. 
So in this fourth section of the video, we are going to see how we can configure the view content event that will send data from the Google Tag Manager web container to the Facebook pixel. We are going to do the same thing as we did for the Facebook configuration tag. I will show you how you can configure this event using the custom HTML tag and then I will show you how to do it with the template tag. So you have the option to using both of them. Uh, the first thing we need to do is create a trigger for this custom view item event. You might notice that the event name is not view item, it is custom view item just to make sure that this event name doesn't go inside with any of the other integration that you might have. You might have also noticed that we are using Google Analytics for this event structure. It is because it's really easy to convert this structure to other event details. So let's go back to the trigger section and create a new custom event. And this custom event will only fire on the custom view item. So let's hit save. Now we need to create some variables for enhanced e-commerce tracking for Facebook Pixel. And we need some parameters for that. So let's just create those event parameters first and then head back to the tag section to create the tags. We need a few things. Uh, they are content type, content ID, content name, num values, and some other things. Let's create a variable for that. However, first we need to extract these data layer variables. So let's create data layer variable so we can extract this currency and this items thing so anything inside an object can be accessed using a dot notation so if we want to access this currency we can use e-commerce dot currency parameter so let's create that e-commerce dot currency and let's rename it to dlv e-commerce dot currency and now we need to access this items variable so we can extract information such as item id name price and other things so let's create a new variable uh, which will have this item array in that. So this one, oops, we are going to go for the data layer variable. And instead of ecommerce.currency, we are going to go for ecommerce.items. I just reset that so you can see more clearly. Let's hit save. Perfect. Now we have both of these arrays. However, Facebook Pixel requires the items array in a different format. So to convert this existing arrays into different format, we are going to use a template created by Steep. So let's uh, set up this template first so we can have all of this information easily converted into other items. Under the variable template, search for the gallery and we are looking for Facebook parameter generator by Steep. So let's search for Facebook parameter generator and we are going to add this to our workspace. So this will be available like any other parameter. So let's head back to the variable section and create five new variables. Let's create new and select this custom parameter. And the first thing is need is an array of object. And we have the array of object in the items array. So this is the array which is denoted by the square brackets and the object is donated by curly brackets. So we have this array of object inside ecommerce.items. So let's import that variable since we have already created it. And the first variable is going to be contents. We have to assign the item ID, item name, price and quantity. This product ID is based on the product ID that is coming inside the items object. So for us, we can either select ID or item ID, both are fine. And for the name, we have to select item name, price and the quantity as an under quantity. So once we have created this, we are going to rename this tag to Facebook parameter generator. We are using e-commerce items and this is for contents. So let's hit save. Perfect. Now we need to do the same thing for five other events. So instead of creating the new one, I'm just going to copy and paste the existing one. So we don't have to uh, do this for all the other events. So this one is for content IDs. So this variable will create a content ID array that is more suitable for Facebook event parameter. Facebook does not accept all kinds of event parameters. They have to be in a certain format. So what this template tag is doing, this is converting the standard e-commerce.items into the parameters that are required by Facebook Pixel. So the next one is going to be Facebook parameter generator, EI and content name. And now we need to create two more. One is going to be price and then the another one is num value. So let's create num item first and rename this tag num items. And the last one will be the value. The value parameter is that we are sending back to the Facebook event manager. So the last one is value. Let's rename this tag to EI value and let's hit save. Perfect. Now we have all the variables that we need except one variable, which is going to be a constant variable for content underscore type. Uh, this tells Facebook pixel that what kind of product we are viewing. So this one is going to be constant variable for product. So let's hit save and go back to the tag section so we can finally create the tag that will fire this view content event. In this section, we are going to see how to create this event using the 
custom HTML tag and later in this video we will see how we can do this using the Facebook pixel tag. So in this custom HTML tag, uh, you can paste the script that is written below or you can just create it yourself. The script tags are basically how anything is going to fire on your store and to track anything on Facebook pixel we are going to use the request called track. So now we are going to create this custom HTML tag that will have this view content script. So let's just go to the, the standard script for the Shopify developer and copy the script. Let's head back to the Google Tag Manager web container and instead of sending this item name we want to send the content name that we have created. So let's search for contents name. Uh, we don't have the content category parameter so we can remove that for now. For the content IDs we are going to send content IDs. For the product type we have already created a constant variable for product so let's import that. The value is going to be value. Uh, the currency we also have a parameter for currency. This one is currency and I think the one that is missing here is num underscore items so we can import that num underscore item one two three four i can see that the contents is also missing so let's also import that content uh perfect now we have all of these events parameters so let's rename this tag to c html meta view content and hit save by doing this this should automatically configure all of the things that you need so let's hit preview and go back to any of the product pages to see if the view content event is firing perfectly. So let's navigate to a product and using this Metapixel helper, we can see what kind of events fires on this page. And we can see that the view and item event has fired and it has all the things that are required. That's perfect. However, if you don't like working with code and you want to use the template, we can also do the same thing. So instead of deleting this, let's edit the existing tag. Instead of using a custom HTML parameter, we are going to use the Facebook archives tag that we use for the configuration tag. Uh, for the pixel ID, we already have a pixel ID. So let's import this Facebook pixel ID. The event's name is going to be view content and we want to send some events data. So let's under the object property, we are going to add content underscore name. We want to send content underscore IDs. We want to send content itself, num underscore items, value, uh, currency. And we also need air one more thing that I'm missing and that is content underscore type. For the content underscore type is going to be products. Currency is already under the data layer variable for currency. So let's select currency. Value is under Facebook parameter generator that we just created. A number item is also the same. Content is also being generated using the same Facebook parameter generator and so is the content IDs and content names. That's perfect. We have all the things that we need. And let's rename this tag to meta view content and hit save. Let's hit preview to just see if this custom HTML tag is also working fine or not. Let's go back to the Shopify store and click on the helper extension after going to any of the product pages to see if this view content event fires perfectly. So we can see that this event fires and it also has the same details like the other event. However, I can see that I might have missed something, but I don't think so. One, two, three, four, five. Everything looks perfect. So we have all the details and now we just need to make sure that this, these changes are not in the draft mode. They are in the public mode. So let's do, let's publish the changes. And if my spellings are perfect, let's write my name, Facebook view content. And let's hit publish. Uh, now we just need to verify this event on the side of the Facebook pixel manager to make sure everything is working all right we can clear the previous test events enter the url of the website and hit connect uh, this is similar to how we connected the debug view of google tag manager with the shopify store however right now the facebook pixels debug view is connected so let's go to any of the product pages and now you can see that we have the view content event coming in and the page view event is also working fine so we have all these event parameters dynamically pulling out so that's how you can configure the view content event using Google Tag Manager and Shopify Store.